Welcome to Power Surge. In this tutorial, we look at heritage buildings and unpack strategies for how to manage these kinds of projects in Revit. In the example provided, the heritage detail has been modelled as an in place family. These are highlighted on screen using this add in that I created for myself to highlight in place content on any project. So then, why is it so important to highlight in-place content? A simple Google search reveals the answer. They slow you down and cause performance issues. So in this tutorial, I'll show you the most efficient workflows to use, helping you keep your projects lean and clean. To give you an idea, this little building contains 10 model in place families, which returns a significant project file size. Using the Die Roots 1 filter, let's unpack these model in place families a little more to gain some insight. This shows me that several modeling categories have been used, and the naming convention is virtually non existent. These are all telltale signs of an operator who has jumped straight into the task without any planning. Tip number one is always planning. Take the time to understand what you are modeling. Most often when dealing with older buildings, architects and designers work off building surveys. Use these to set up levels and grids and other useful information for your project. It is important to understand that the time taken to model in place or as a family is the same. Your preference may be to model as a family right from the start. In my experience, this is not what most people do. So my advice for tip two is to use the model in place as a starting point only. Here, the model in place has already been completed. So the next step is to extract it from the model. To do this, edit the model in place family by removing any repeated details. Then group a concise area of the extrusion, creating a model group. Then while still in edit mode, export the model group as an RFA as shown. RFA stands for Revit family. Following this, open the exported model group family. Here it is on screen. Exporting like this retains the model elements in their project position. What I mean by this is that in this case, the model elements are raised up off the reference plane level and slightly rotated. In order to convert this into a usable family, I'll need to fix this. Let's now work through this process to give you a more comprehensive lesson. I'll start by creating a second level which can be used as a reference. But notice, the project browser has only one floor plan view. And as I click this, nothing is visible. This is because the family is raised up over that view range. So back in the elevation view, I can select all elements and drag these down. And now the elements are visible in the ground floor view. Again, as noted earlier, the elements have retained their project orientation. To fix this, use the angular dimension to work out the rotation angle, then rotate the elements as required so that these are now orthogonal. Following on, reselect all elements and align the back face to the horizontal work plane.
take this opportunity to check the exports and ensure that these were modelled correctly. On screen, the arc is slightly misaligned. This is inherited from the export. An advantage to using the family editor is that this kind of detail is now super easy to fix. Tip three is to check the always vertical option and then nest the export into a wall-based family template. This will facilitate placement when the family is eventually loaded into a project. After nesting, simply use the reference planes to align by. The family is now ready to be inserted into the project. Delete the redundant model in place elements. And move to a more conducive view. This is where step one, which is project setup, really helps. To place the family, I first pin down elements that I don't need. Then I toggle the pinned elements to off in the selection tray. I then drag the family into position using a 3D view. The reference setup views will be used to fine tune the placement. And finally, another obvious but important advantage of recreating these elements as families is that they can be quickly replicated across the project or even used in other projects. In the next part of the tutorial, the focus is on wall systems and how these can be used to add repetitive details such as grooves and mouldings. Switching back to our primary example where the mouldings have been added as an in-place family using the sweep function. Tip 4 starts us off by providing a better solution using wall systems. 
in the on-screen example, I am simply using a generic wall type. Before adding the required detail to the generic wall, I need to export the profiles used in the model in place family. I can edit the family and simply copy the profile sketches to the clipboard. The next step is to open a profile family template and then simply paste the profiles as required. These can then be saved and reloaded back into the project. With the profile families now created and loaded, I can begin to edit the wall. Find the structure parameter and click edit to access the wall modifiers. It is here that I can attach the sweeps to the wall using the profiles that I just loaded in. Simply click the add button and select the required profile family and then add the offset distances. The advantage of doing it like this is evident when you create a wall run which changes directions several times. The mouldings are mitered together neatly, provided the direction changes make sense. But what if two or more adjoining walls are not part of the same family? There is a slight variation to this method. Sweeps can be added individually as well. Using the drop down arrow in the wall tool, select Wall Sweep. Select the sweep family to be used and then select the wall face the sweep should be hosted on. Once the height parameters have been set, simply copy and paste to continue creating more sweeps. Now to join the moldings together, select the modify returns button on the ribbon and then select the side face to create a return profile. Then simply select and drag the blue dot as shown on screen to extend this out. And finally use the join tool to miter these together.
The last tip is for repeating details like this under awning trellis. Here I use the curtain wall system where the vertical elements are created as mullions. For more information on this method, refer to my video on curtain wall systems. And now to close out the tutorial, I can run the find model in place tool again, which returns only one shown on screen in blue. All other model in place families have been swapped out for more efficient RFA families, which results in a healthier file. Here is a comparison. That's the end of the video. I hope that you learnt something new and that you found it interesting. If you did, consider subscribing and hit the like button and drop a comment. And I'll see you in the next video.